Today we're going to talk about addition and multiplication rules of probability. We now turn our attention to those probabilities that involve two events rather than just a singular event. There are only two possibilities, event A happening or event B happening, or event A happening and event B happening. Of course, there are some, yeah, I don't know that word, a distinction that will need subtleties, subtleties, I can't say that, that we need to take note of as we go along. The addition rule for probability. Now, there's two addition rules for probability, so be careful. The probability of event A happening or event B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now, I said there's two situations. So, this is a situation where you could have some of the probabilities be, be covered of the same thing. Like, uh, if you were to draw a red, the probability to draw a red or a queen, okay? Our queen... So there would be the probability of drawing a red plus the probability of drawing a queen, and you would subtract off the probability of drawing the two. Then there's the situation where they're mutually exclusive, where you couldn't have the same happening. So we'll look at examples from both of those. Suppose that a student is chosen at random to receive a gift card for filling out a survey. The following table shows a breakdown of who filled out the survey. So, of the freshmen, there were three student government members that filled it out, 15 non-student government members for a total of 18, and so forth. What is the probability that the winner was either a freshman or a member of student government? So, we need to find the probability of being a freshman that, that filled it out, okay? So, there were 18 total freshmen out of the total number of people that filled it out were 46. So, the probability of being a freshman was 18 out of 46, then we need to find the probability of a being a member of student government that filled it out. There were 10 student government members that filled it out out of 46. And last, what's the probability that you're both a freshman and a student government member. How many of those were there? We can just look like this. There were three that were both freshmen and student government members. So we need to go subtract those off because we don't want to count them twice. So the probability of being a freshman or a student government member would be the probability of being a freshman, that's 18 over 46, plus the probability of being a student government member, 10 out of 46, minus the probability of being both a freshman and a student government member, 3 out of 46. So that's 25 out of 46 or 0.543478. So there's about a 54% chance that 
they were a freshman or a member of student government. Recall the example from 7-2, where you won a new iPod. I don't remember doing an example in 7-2 like that, but okay. You can have any iPad, any iPod you want. You just have to go to the store and pick it out. We can create a tree diagram to list the possible iPods you could choose from. There's a whole lot here. So you could get a shuffle a nano, a touch, or classic. And in the shuffle, there's silver, blue, lime, orange, and pink. And any of those could be engraved or not. In a nano, you could get an HG or a 16G. And there's all the colors. And they could be engraved or not. For a touch, you could get an 18, 8G, 32G, or 64 engraved or not, and classic silver or black, engraved or not, okay? Assuming that you are equally likely to choose any of the 48 iPods, what's the probability that the iPod you choose is orange or not engraved, okay? So the first thing we have to do, I don't think I have an orange, there's a brown, is find the probability that it of choosing an orange. Okay, so here's orange, orange, orange. There's six ways we could get an orange. So six out of 48. And then the probability that it's not engraved will be added. So there's several of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 24. 24 out of 48. And you probably just ask, well, why couldn't you just not select these? Well, you could. But for sake of the example, we're selecting them. And then there's the probability that it could be both orange and not engraved, and there were one, two, three of those. Okay, so we'll take six over forty eight. plus 24 over 48 minus 3 over 48. I left my over 48 over, off there. So that'd be 27 out of 48 or 0.5625. So it's a little over a half a, ch a, a half a chance that you would get one that is orange or not engraved. The addition rule for mutually exclusive events. So when you can't have both happen, okay? There's no outcomes in, in common. Then you just add. You don't have to subtract off the and. Suppose that you've decided it's time to get a pet. Your apartment complex allows you to have only one pet, and you decide to go to the local animal shelter to adopt one of the available pets. Because you can't decide between, between a dog and a cat, you've left the choice up to chance. You're going to run your finger down the list of animals without looking and let the lucky pet be the one you stop on. The following graph shows the available animals 
on the list at the shelter. Unfortunately, you didn't consider that there's other animals that might be on the list. What is the probability that you choose either a dog or a cat to take home with you? And obviously you can see why this wouldn't be mutual why this would be mutually exclusive because you can't have an animal that is both a cat and a dog that I'm aware of anyway. So this unfortunate person could end up with a farm animal or a rabbit or a bird or a ferret. Okay. So <coughs> the probability of a cat or a dog would be the probability of a cat plus the probability of a dog. Okay, so the probability that we get a cat. There were 15 cats. Um, we need to know the total. There's a total of 32 animals. So the probability of a cat would be 15 over 32. The probability of choosing a dog would be 9 over 32. And so we just put our two numbers in here and add them. 24 over 32 or 0.75. So... There's a 75% chance that you'll get either a cat or a dog. Choosing a college can be an exciting and nervous time in the life of a high school student. Emma has finally narrowed down her choices to the top four. She's also given each school a probability based on certain characteristics. So the first university its characteristic is that it's closest to home. And the probability that she'll choose it is 0.25. And then she has some other characteristics, best sports, her best friend's choice, and the best academic program of her choice, and their probability, just um, from her opinion. What is the probability that Emma ends up at University B or University D. We just need to add the probability for B and the probability for D. Point four five. That's it. Independent events are events where one result where the result of one event does not influence the probability of the other. And a dependent event are where events where the result of one event does influence the probability of the other. Determine if the following pairs of events are independent. Event A, eating a red candy from a new bag of Skittles. Or B, and B, pulling a second Skittle from the same bag that is also red. Well, you've eaten the first Skittle, right? You've already eaten a red Skittle. So the probability of you getting another red is, has changed. So that means that this is a dependent event. A woman gives birth to a daughter. The same woman's second child is also a girl. Well, the probability that the child is a girl is the same for the second pregnancy. It doesn't have anything to do with what 
the sex of the first child was. So this is independent. This one's a little tricky. Tina is the first woman to finish the 2020 Boston Marathon. Tina is the first woman to finish the 2021 New York Marathon. At first glance, these seem like they would be independent, but there's a couple of things that you might not know about marathons. I didn't really know either. First of all, the best starting positions are given to winners of previous races. So if she won the Boston Marathon, she's going to be given a better starting position for the New York Marathon. Also, years of training will have a positive effect on your body. So she's going to be even more, most likely, athletically fit for event B than she was for event A. So these are dependent events. The multiplication rule for independent events... A and B are independent events when the probability of event A happening and event B is given by P of the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Given a fair die and a standard deck of 52 cards, find the probability of rolling a 6 and drawing a nace. So the probability of rolling a six times the probability of drawing an ace. The probability of rolling a six is one and six. The probability of drawing an ace, there's four aces in the deck of 52. So that's 4 over 312 or 0 0.012821. Suppose we know the following breakdown for internal medicine pediatric hospitalists who work at Madison Regional Hospital and the ages of their patients on a given day. So the hospitalists, the person working on them, the doctor or nurse practitioner or whatever, six males and seven females, and the patient's age, under the age of 35, there were 16. Between 35 and 55, there were 35 patients seen, and over the age of 55, there were 21. What is the probability that the first patient treated is over 55 years old, and treated by a male hospitalist at the Madison Regional Hospital. So we want the probability that the patient is over 55 and treated by male hospitalists. So that would be We need the probability that the patient was over 55. Well, there were 21 patients that were over 55 out of a total of 72. And the probability that we get a male hospitalist, six males out of a total of 13. And we'll multiply these to get 126 over 936 or 0 0.134615. So the, pro the likelihood of a patient being over 55 and getting treated by a male was pretty slim.
the conditional probability of event B happening, given event A, is the probability of event B, assuming that event A has already or will at some point occur. The conditional probability is written, the probability of B given A, and the little given is a line like that, just a vertical line, and read the probability of B given A. So the multiplication rule for dependent rule events is different. If A and P are de B are dependent, then the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. You find the probability that from a standard deck of cards, you're dealt two cards, the queen of hearts and then a face card. So find this probability. So the probability that you get a queen and a face card. That will be the probability that you get a queen times the probability that you get a face card given the fact that you've already pulled a queen. So first, what's the probability that you'll get a queen? of hearts, not just a queen, queen of hearts. There's only one queen of hearts, so one out of 52. So, what's the prop possibility that you would get a face card? There's 12 face cards out of 52. So the next question is, what is the possibility that you would get a face card given you've already drawn a queen? Okay, so you've already drawn a queen, which is a face card. So there's only 11 face cards left. And you've already drawn a queen, which was a card. So there's only 51 cards left. So the probability that you draw a face card, given you've already drawn a queen of hearts, is 11 in 51. So that's 11 over 2,652, or 0 0.004148. Very slim. Two hundred and ninety students were asked about their satisfaction with their interactions with the financial aid office on campus. Their responses are given in the following table. So we've got freshmen that were satisfied, they were fifty five, twenty one were dissatisfied, thirteen didn't use, and so forth. If one response from the 290 students is selected at random, find the probability that the following occurred. The student was satisfied with their experiment, experience. So first of all, we're only trying to find the probability that they were satisfied. Okay. So... How many were satisfied? If we add this up, there were 144 out of the 290 students. So 0.496552. Okay. The, what's the probability that the student was satisfied given that they were a senior.
okay? So if they're given that they were a senior, then what we need on the bottom is the total number of seniors. So add that up, there were 43. And we want to know how many were satisfied that were seniors, 22. Point five one one six two eight. What's the probability the student was dissatisfied given they were a freshman or a sophomore? Okay, on the bottom, we need the total number of freshmen and sophomores. That's 161. And we need to know how many were dissatisfied out of the freshmen and sophomores. So that would be both of those. It's 54. Point three three five four zero four, And last, the probability the student was a graduate student given they did not use the financial aid office. Okay. Well, we need to know the total that didn't use the financial aid office. That's 67. And the number of those that were graduate students, 19. So 19 over 67 or 0.283582. And our last example, I know this is a long section, hang in there. So studies show that men have a one in six or about 17% chance of developing prostate cancer. A PSA test is used to detect prostate cancer and can give either a positive or negative result. Studies showed that of those men who have developed prostate cancer, their PSA test is negative 15% of the time. So that's saying that those that do have it, their test is coming up negative. On the other hand, studies showed that 58.5% of all men receive a positive PSA test. So there's a lot of men that are getting a pot of positive test that don't have cancer. What is the probability that a man develops prostate cancer? Well, we were already told that it was one in six or about 17%, 0. 0.167. What is the probability that a man with cancer has a negative PSA test? So we want the probability that the test is negative given he has cancer. And we were told that in the problem, 15% or 0.15. What's the probability that a man with cancer has a positive PSA test. 
So positive given he has cancer. Well, that would be one minus the probability that it's negative given he had cancer that we already found in the previous problem, 0.15. So 0.85 chance that it's pot that he has cancer with a positive PSA test. What's the probability that a man has cancer and a positive PSA test? So both cancer, it's two different things um, together. So he has cancer and he has the positive test. That would be the probability that he has cancer times the probability that it's positive given he has cancer. So the probability that he had cancer was one-sixth. And the probability that it was positive given he had cancer was 0.85. So 0.141667. And last one, what is the probability that a man with a positive PSA test has cancer? So here's what we want to know. We want to know the probability of a man actually having cancer given he has a positive test. So remember we said there were several false positives, cases where it ends up positive and he doesn't really have it. So this would be the probability that it's positive and he has cancer. So that's the probability of positive plus the probability of cancer given it's positive. But we're trying to figure out this cancer given positive. Okay, we know that P of, po of positive plus cancer is equal to this, but we just want to know, we know already P of, of C and positive, and we already know P of positive. We need to know P of C of cancer given it's positive. So we're gonna solve for P of C given positive by dividing both sides by P of positive. Okay, so in the previous one, we found positive and cancer. And this is cancer and positive, but same thing. So point one four one six six seven. And the probability of a positive test was given in the problem, 58.5%. So 0.585. We get 0.242165. So there's about a 24% chance that you would get a positive test but not have cancer. And then it sticks this on, on, on the end. Bayes' theorem is the probability of A given B is equal to 
the probability of B given A times the probability of A over the probability of B. So I guess if you can't figure out what A given B is, but you know what B given A is, then you can find A given B, or vice versa. We have two additional examples for section four. Use the table to find the probability that a randomly chosen member of the student government board is a junior or lives in off-campus housing. So probability of a junior or off-campus housing. So to find this probability, we'll use our rule for or, and that would be taking the probability of a junior, of being a junior, plus the probability of living in off-campus housing. And then if there's the possibility of both, then we need to subtract off those that are both a junior and living in off-campus housing because we've already included them. So the probability of a junior, there are four juniors, and we need our totals. So let's see. If we add on-campus housing, there's 10. Off-campus, there's 11. So total, we have 21 students. So four out of 21 is the probability that we select a junior. The probability of off-campus, there's 11 out of 21. And then we need to look at the ones that are juniors and living in off-campus housing. So that would be four out of 21 again. So the probability that we select a junior or a student living in off-campus housing is 11 out of 21, or as a decimal, that would be 0 0.523810. An example two says a bag of 11 marbles contains seven marbles with red on them, six with blue on them, six with green on them, and three with both red and green on them. What is the probability that a randomly chosen marble has either red or green on it? And it says note that these events are not mutually exclusive. So some of these marbles with red on them might have red and green and some with green might have red on them. So we'll need to take that into account. So the probability of red or green, this is very similar to the last example, would be the probability of selecting a red plus the probability of selecting a green and subtract off the probability of selecting one with red and green. So there's 11 marbles total. So the probability of a red would be 7 and 11. The probability of a green would be 6 and 11. And the probability that they have both red and green on them is 3 and 11. That gives us our probability is 10 over 11, or as a decimal, 0.909091. Okay.